I have work in the morning, but yet I'm still here bringing you an episode of Quintessentials! In a previous video of mine, I showed you how to take an audio cassette and convert it into a digital format or uh, digitize it and um, showed you how to do that with a computer and with a phone. Today I'd like to show you the same thing, maybe not with a phone, but with a, with a computer at least. Uh, show you how to do the same thing, but with a VHS tape. I might want to get checked. These clunky, brickish, plastic things from the past. Most reminiscent of the 80s and 90s. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> of course, if you're my age, you've got lots of memories or whatever stored on these things and you need to get them to a digital format for whatever reason. And there are many ways to do this. Lots of devices, like here's this device that I was using to do this, but then found the method I'm gonna show you today, which is actually, I think, a little better. Um, this device takes the RCA output from a VCR and converts it to an HD signal. So it upscales it to, you can choose between 720p or 1080p, so I chose 720. But even still, it's still upscaling that picture from a smaller resolution to a bigger one. And on top of that, it's taking that 4-3 ratio picture and stretching it. And so you get kind of a distorted picture. And then you can fix this in editing, squish it back down. But then it's, it's just really for other reasons too. But mainly it's just extra work. Why? Photographers and cinematographers alike will tell you when you're recording something or taking a photo, it's often best to just get the most ideal capture right in capturing. Like it's better to take the night the right picture rather than to try to make it an editing. It's better to record video and with the right setting so everything looks good rather than record it with crappy settings and then try to fix it in editing. It's better, easier, and saves you more time to do it right as you capture it. And I would say these tapes are kind of the same way. You're taking a live signal that's coming in, a live picture, and you're recording it into a digital format, much like the camera that you're uh, looking at me through uh, does the same thing. It's taking a real image of me talking about stuff and converting it into a digital format in real time. Same kind of concept here. Instead of a real image, though, this is just a signal that it interprets and then converts to digital. Uh, with that being said, let's get on with it. We're going to keep the original native resolution that it comes in, and we're not going to stretch it. And here's how we're going to do it. First thing we're going to need, we're going to need four things. Four. First thing is a VCR. And notably one that has the RCA jacks on the back. You're wanting that one that says RCA out on there. You can probably guess what comes next, an RCA cable. So you got the three red, white, and yellow jacks on one end, and of course the same type on the other. So one end plugs into your VCR. The other end plugs into the thing that actually does the conversion, and that's this thing here. I bought the $30 branded one. This is the Diamond Multimedia branded capture device. But the device itself is just called Video Capture VC500. And I paid $30 to have it come in this nice, well, not nice, cheesy, early mid to mid 2000s looking box. You can actually probably buy these things on eBay for, like, you just get this part of it. This is the actual device. And get it for like five bucks. It'd show up instead of a, instead of showing up in a big box like this. It'd show up in like a bubble wrapped envelope or something. And it, all you're looking for, you just search for VC500 on eBay. You could probably find it no problem. If not, I'll see if I can find it myself and include a link in the description of this video. So yeah, you get that. Connect the other end to this. And then that converts it into a streaming USB signal that you'd plug into your laptop or desktop computer. So we got VCR, RCA cable, VC500, and then computer. And now, so when we're all hooked up, we need to install the driver for the VC500 device. So mine, since I, you know, like I said, I bought the giant box, so mine also came with this installation CD. It has the driver on that. 
It also comes with this little booklet. Just inside the first page of this booklet, if you can read it, in blue there is a link for the driver and stuff right there. So you don't really need the you don't you don't really need the disc to do it. If I lost the disc and still have that booklet, I'd still be good. So I'll include that link in the description as well if you want to do this along with me. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now if the disc doesn't autoplay after you stick it in, you can always open a uh, file explorer, go to this PC, double click on your optical drive, and click on the VC500 application. This will launch it, provided you give it permission. This horribly dated thing pops up. This is like ripped out of 2005. As you can see, there's a few different things you can install here. I think PowerDirector might be a simple like program that either can edit the video and or burn it to a DVD. It's some cheap thing, like who even uses DVDs now. Easy Grabber is a little program that comes with it that's supposed to grab the streaming video coming in from the VC500 device and save it to the hard drive as a file. I've also noticed you can take the driver folder Copy and paste that onto your desktop, computer's hard drive, whatever. And just run the setup from there and it will do the exact same thing. But just for the heck of it, I'll do it the way that seems easier. Just click the install driver. It does the same thing as copying that over and clicking on setup. So it launches this little window, does this for a second, and then it's going to ask me something. Yeah, click OK. Here's the message that I was mentioning before. So if you've already installed this and you're trying to reinstall it, if you already told it to trust it and clicked install, then it's not going to come up again. So this is why I'm doing it on a new computer where I haven't installed it on there before. I think in the past I clicked the don't install, but this time around I clicked install and you know made sure that was checked to trust that from the Shenzhen Jania Tech Technology LTD. Okay, we're done. Simple as that. Now, if you wanted to, you could use Easy Grabber and uh, use that to capture your video. It is free. There's not a lot of options on it, though. You could also use OBS Studio. It's a video streaming recording app. It has a lot more options, plenty of options, actually. But it, it can be a little overwhelming. It's also free, however. But my method, I use Bandicam. It's just an application that I bought and already had for when I started recording games and stuff. It's something that I already knew how to use. And so I just went with that. Um, but it does cost $40, so that is the catch there. But it is kind of in between. Like, it's more complicated than Easy Grabber by a lot. It's very customizable and is able to use your graphics card if you have an NVIDIA card. It's able to use your computer's resources a lot better. But it, it does, it's not completely overwhelming. It's more just for capturing video um, and doesn't do the streaming part. So there's less, it, it's less complicated than OBS Studio for that in that respect but for the sake of this video i'll be doing it with bandicam if there is somebody out there who wants to see me do it with obs or easy grabber feel free to let me know in the comments and uh, perhaps i'll make a follow-up video to this one so at this point you want to fire up bandicam and we're going to be exploring this fun little tab the hdmi tab this is uh not just for hdmi um it is for like devices like an Elgato HDMI capture card, but it's also for other devices that stream video into the computer like a webcam or in this case the VC500. Anyway, so if you don't have a source yet, make sure your source is on and whatnot, but there's also some settings we're going to want to try and uh, mess around with and that's where we click the gear there. And if it's not already selected on the Conazent Polaris video capture, which is, you know, it says it's VC500 on the outside, but then to the computer it's a and if that's even how you pronounce it. Um, sometimes you can have other devices, like if you have a webcam already on your laptop or something, like that might already just show up. But if it's not on this, then put it on the Condensant Player's video capture. Format, we want to do pretty much the largest the device can handle, which is pretty much probably going to be its default already. So the 720 by 480 and the 29.97 FPS. Now, the VC500 has both a RCA and an S-Video video in. So there's two different ways you can send video into the device. And you're able to select which device here. So if you did like, right now it's set to composite, but you hooked up an S-Video 
cable to it and you can't see it, this will be the reason why. It's just selected on the wrong source. You click on the drop down and switch to S video. But for right now, we're doing composite. So we'll do that in. And then de interlacing probably is going to be defaulted on none, but I switch it to blend. The reason is when you do none, there's like these horizontal lines. Anytime there's any movement in the picture that's horizontal, you see these like jagged lines along the left and right sides mostly of whatever is moving. And it just doesn't look good. Blend seems to help get rid of that. Also keep in mind the resolution and FPS that we've chosen. We're telling the device that's streaming the video what type of video we want streaming in. So this is the type of street, this is the resolution and frame rate of the video that that device is streaming in, the device as in VC500. But just because we can do that doesn't mean we can change it up here either. Just because it's sending in that type of video, we can have it save as uh, any other type of file. For example, we can tell it to, okay, we can upscale it clear up to full HD if we want to, and it will stretch it and upscale it need be. Kind of like that little white RCA to HDMI adapter would do. I just choose full size. So this means whatever resolution the source video is, it will just match it. And then it was a 29.97 frame rate. Here's a 30 FPS. Um, I'm going to match it as well. And we could even do quality 100%. So there's no compression at all. There shouldn't be any compression or fix whatsoever. And this is up to you, really. You could have it 100%, but it, the higher the quality, the bigger the file size, just because it's not compressing it as much. Or if it's at 100%, it's not going to compress it at all, at all. It seems like you can only really start seeing compression artifacts at 60, but that may not always be the case, depending on what's going on in the picture. Even at 80, you might be able to see them. But for me, personally, I feel like 80 is a good compromise between file size and quality. I'm going to leave it at 80, full size, match the frame rate to 29.97, click OK. And you can uh, select where you want to save it there. Next, you'd want to select your audio by clicking uh, underneath the video part and then the record part, do settings. You'd think it makes sense to select the USB 2.0 video capture, but for whatever reason, this doesn't seem to work. No audio actually comes through that, but... Uh, it does stream it and play it live through like the regular computer speaker. So if you did the default sound device, you'd be able to hear it there. I don't know why it does this. This seems a bit off. I feel like this wouldn't be something on every computer. However, I did it on my desktop and then on my laptop now. And it still seems to be having that same issue. But luckily we can just set it to default sound device and no problem there. One final thing I almost forgot to mention is when you're doing the settings for all this, um, the video, and there's these three dots, this little button you can press by the frames per second. You want to click on that, and there's VFR, variable frame rate, or CFR, constant frame rate. You're going to want to choose constant frame rate, especially if you edit with Adobe Premiere like I do. Uh, Final Cut doesn't seem to really have this problem, but um, if you do variable frame rate, the video, like the video file that Bandicam saves onto the computer, its frame rate can vary and most players are able to pick up on this and display you know sometimes one second it's it's a higher frame rate when something's moving around quickly and then it slows down when there's not a lot of movement final cut and other uh, players are able to pick up on this and display it correctly uh, adobe premiere doesn't do this for whatever reason so i guess you could say if final cut's really better than adobe premiere then there's one reason why it is i suppose if you do constant frame rate, the computer will do its best job to keep it at a constant frame rate. But as you can see, it says it'll go to VFR if the encoder is not good enough. But if you have a higher end computer, this is not really a problem at all. Especially if you're doing SD video. Like, come on. So you click OK on that. Click OK there. We're ready to record. Finally. Finally ready. After like 15 minutes. <laughs> so you hit play in the VCR. And hit Gotta love Quigley Down Under. The only Tom Selleck movie that I actually like. And it's a pretty dang good one.
One final note is the fact that we've been talking about just the yellow RCA video input when in fact the VC500 has two. Here is a second one. This is a S video input. So it's got those, it's a circular thing with four pins in the middle. It's supposed to deliver a better video signal than the yellow RCA. So if you have the means to use this, I definitely would. Some VCRs uh, have an S video output on them and therefore you can take an S video cable just an S video on each end somehow it goes in there it's keyed there we go plug one end into the VC500 plug the other end into the VCR and you're good to go um, well sort of to demonstrate this I'm going to be using this 15 ish year old camcorder 16 16 years old 15 Christmas of 2003 is when my family got this camera so yeah, almost 16 years. It has uh, both an RCA out, which looks like this little headphones jack here that this cable plugs into. Splits it out to a uh, video RCA and just a single channel audio there. And it also has on the front here this S video out. So plug it into the VC500, bam. Now keep in mind the S video cable does not carry audio, so that's kind of the drawback to it. If you get a slightly better video signal, but then you have to run a second cable, usually the regular AV out, to have the audio. And so you just plug in just the audio here into one of the RCA jacks. Uh, and then the final thing to actually make it work is click on your HDMI tab, click the gear, and then your video input. If it's on composite in, you need to switch to the S video. Or vice versa if you're only using a composite signal. And then when I turn the camera on, you should be able to see, there it is. I guess the manual focus is still on this camera. Hey, I don't look half bad. And then yeah, just hit record and you don't even have to actually record to tape on this camera. You could just record a live feed. Or, you know, since this camera can play those little high 8 tapes, you could switch it over to VCR mode and play a tape through this and record it onto your computer. Basically the same as a VCR, it's just that this replaces the VCR and if it has an S-Video capability you add another cable into the mix to get improved video quality and I think that just about does it. With that being said, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for doing so. Um, hopefully you found it useful. I hope that it guides you in your endeavor to preserve the past from your grandma or aunt or whoever the hell is asking you to do videos or perhaps yourself maybe you're kind of like me and want to just it's kind of interesting to take something old and be able to preserve it forever i like that idea of taking something that's like a tape that's slowly degrading and becoming worse throughout time and kind of preserving it at least where it at that point and keeping it from aging further simply by digitizing it so again thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video whatever it may be what what grand adventure lies in the next video who knows this is quintessentials after all like subscribe comment if you haven't done so already and i'll see ya Bye bye